Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a radical expression. We have the cube root of 2 plus root 5 plus the cube root of 2 minus root 5. And we're going to simplify this as much as possible. And I'll be presenting two methods. And there's something interesting about the solution to this problem. You're going to realize, hopefully, we'll talk about it towards the end. There's something interesting about it, which I don't want to tell you right now, but it has to do with the other problem we did today. If you've seen the video that I published, uh, the premiere one, anyways. So let's start with the first method. We are going to evaluate a numerical expression. So it's the sum of two cube roots. So I think it makes sense if we set this expression equal to x and then cube both sides because cubing will eliminate most of the radicals, right? And remember, for cubing as sum, almost all the time I use the following identity, and it's very helpful. We also use it for the cubic formula. A plus B quantity cubed by the binomial theorem is equal to AQ plus B cubed plus 3AB times A plus B. By the way, if you factor this, factor out an A plus B, and factor this by grouping, you're going to get a formula for the sum of two cubes. That's a different story. Anyways, I use this formula. So by that, we get the cube root of 2 plus root 5 cubed, which is 2 plus root 5. You see how easy that is? Plus the second one cubed, plus 3ab, 3 times the cube root of 2 plus root 5, times the cube root of 2 minus root 5, times a plus b. You see, it's fairly easy. It's just the factored form of a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Make sense? I hope it does. What is this equal to? x cubed. We'll write that at the end, but let's go ahead and simplify this. Root 5 cancels out. 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, so x cubed is equal to, because this was equal to x cubed, remember? 2 plus 2, 4. And then this times this is 4 minus 5 under the radical, but that's just the cube root of negative 1, which is negative 1, and multiply by 3, you get a negative 3. Multiply by this, which is x. Awesome. See how simple that is? Substitution is just awesome. I love it. Anyways, let's turn this into a cubic equation, like a full cubic. It's not a full cubic, but it is just a cubic. Okay. Now, we're missing the x squared, which is actually nice because if you try to solve this equation by using the cubic formula, you'd probably do something like this, x cubed plus 3x equals 4. And then you would basically write the formula that I just wrote, but you would basically put this on the left-hand side and isolate this. And then this would be equal to a cubed plus b cubed. And then this would be equal to 3a b a plus b. And then from here, actually a plus b is going to be x, so never mind. This is just going to be 3ab. And then from here, ab is going to be 1. a cubed plus b cubed is going to be 4. And you just have to solve the system. And then find the values of a and b and so on and so forth. Anyways, that's another story. That's the cubic formula. We're not going to do it because this equation is so easy to solve. You know why? Because you can guess and check. I know some people don't like that. Guess and check. Is that a method? Absolutely. That's a really awesome problem-solving strategy. And x equals 1 works because remember what we've been talking about, all these polynomial equations, almost all of them. Check the sum of the coefficients. 1 plus 3 plus negative 4 is equal to 0. Yes, x equals 1 is a solution. Is that the only solution? So is this the answer? Let's find out. Can a numerical expression have more than one answer? That's a good question. Let's try to answer that. So I'm going to do the following. Knowing that x equals 1 is a solution, I'm going to write this as x cubed minus 1 plus 3x minus 3. So I split the negative 4 into two pieces because I want to make it factorable. And guess what? You can make it factorable like this. And x equals 1 is going to be a root because x minus 1 is a factor. This is called the factor theorem. So many things. x squared plus x plus 1. That's why polynomials are awesome. And now... We got a simpler equation because now the second factor is going to be x squared plus x plus 1 plus 3, which is x squared plus x plus one, 4 equals 0. Uh-oh, the second equation, I mean the quadratic, doesn't have any real solutions. Too bad. Actually, that's a good thing because x equals 1 is the only real solution. But what happens with this? Let's go ahead and check it out. Negative b 
plus minus the square root of p squared 1 minus 4 times 4, which is 16. 1 minus 16 is negative 15. So this is going to give you uh, root 15 times i, which is non-real, divide by 2. Obviously, we have a real expression. Come on. Isn't this a real number? Cube root of 2 plus root 5. Because the cube root of negative numbers even are real, right? You can't say the same thing with square roots. But if you cube root a negative number, you just get a negative answer, but it's still a real number. So this is actually a real number because it's the sum of two real numbers. Make sense? So it can only equal a real number, not a complex number, not a non-real number. So the answer is 1. Make sense? In other words, the cube root of 2 plus root 5 plus the cube root of 2 minus root 5 is the same thing as 1. That's kind of hard to believe, right? I mean, you can show this to people, your friends, your parents, your colleagues, whoever you want, professors, well, be careful with the professors, you don't want to offend them. But anyways, and tell them that this is an integer. It is, actually. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the second method, and we'll finish with that. So, the second method uses, obviously, a different strategy because it kind of breaks it down. Now, if I can find out what cube root of 2 plus root 5 is, then I can hopefully do the same thing for the conjugate, right? Because the cube root of the conjugate is going to be the, the conjugate of the cube root. Does that make sense? I hope it does. But I'm going to set this. I'll make an assumption. A and B are rational numbers, and this is supposed to equal something like A plus B root 5 if you expect to get nice answers. Notice we got a very nice answer, so A and B better be nice. Let's cube both sides one more time, but this time we're cubing a single quantity, but it'll be interesting to see. 2 plus root 5 is going to equal a cubed. And to keep a long story short, can I just simplify this? When you cube it and kind of uh, rearrange the terms so that you can kind of look at the coefficient of root 5, this is what it's going to look like without further ado. And here, by comparison, the rational number on the right-hand side is this, because this is irrational. I mean, if a and b are 0, obviously, it's not going to work, right? So this is supposed to equal 2, and this is supposed to equal 1. That gives you a system of equations like this. a cubed plus 15ab squared equals 2, and 5b cubed plus 3a squared b equals 1. This is actually a homogeneous system. How nice is that? which means you can replace B with something like, like, like AK. And from here, you get the following equation. 1 plus 15K squared equals 10K cubed plus 6K. Please try to get that by replacing B with AK in both of these equations. And then guess what? K equals 1 is a solution. Uh-oh. Again, the obvious. And this just means B equals A. Because remember, B equals AK if A is 1. I mean, if K is 1 b is equal to a. If b is equal to a, then I can just plug in that, and I get 16. a cubed equals 2. a cubed equals 1 eighth, and a is equal to 1 half. b is equal to 1 half, and the cube root of 2 plus root 5 is a plus b root 5, which is 1 half plus 1 half root 5. And of course, the cube root of 2 minus root 5 is going to be a minus b root 5. If you don't believe that, cube both sides, you'll see by the binomial theorem, they're supposed to be that way. 1 half minus 1 half root 5. Add these up and voila, you'll get the answer. And the answer is going to be 1 as before. Make sense? I hope this does. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.